So I've just done a VO2 max test. So let's find out if it's worth the, all of the hype or the hefty price tag. So in this eye-opening video, we delve into the science behind this fitness assessment to find out whether it's truly beneficial or just another money-burning fad. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, start the test. You're gonna sit, relax. Once I start the test, no talking, but I'll give you a countdown. Then three minutes, sit, no talking. Okay, on about two and a half minutes, we get onto the treadmill. Okay, when we're on the treadmill, we're gonna be working at an incline of one. Okay, so the reason for the incline at one, just because on the road, none of us run like this, but on the treadmill, we tend to run like this, just mimic the road. Okay, for today's test, we're gonna start on eight kilometers an hour. Okay, we're gonna hold that for three minutes. So that'll be our warm up run. Okay, eight kilometers an hour is that weird, am I walking, am I running pace, I know. It's very slow, I know. Idea that I want is I want you to have a running motion because if we're walking and all of a sudden we start running, the t um, system picks it up as something happened and all of a sudden that's your threshold one. And you don't wanna be training at eight kilometers an hour. That's a bit awkward for everyone involved. Okay, so preferably like a little running motion at a very, very slow pace. Like I said, you're not gonna be able to see the ground to so use that time, find yourself on the treadmill, find your distance from the front, then, from there, once the three minutes done, we're gonna go up by one, we're gonna jump, once the three minutes is done, we're gonna jump straight into 10 kilometers an hour. That's about six minutes, okay? And then we're gonna go up by one kilometer an hour every minute, okay? It is quite a bit of a jump, but with you being able to hold four minutes, okay? I wanna have good initial stuff, but I also wanna hit your max before we get to 15 minutes, okay? So I've kind of worked it out that we hit about four minutes, okay? I think we're gonna hit it at, 13 minutes into the into the actual running portion of the test at the end of every stage you'll see about 15 seconds before 20 15 seconds before the end of the stage. i'm going to hold this up in front of you it's an rpe scale you have one right in front of you as well okay no talking aloud so you're going to point with your finger where it is okay six is i could have stayed at home this is very easy 20 is i'm bleeding out of my eyes with pain okay we're going to go to 22 today happy cool idea is i just want max 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 okay so i don't want you to stop before you really think like we're done, okay? If you point somewhere and I read the wrong number, because it happens, you know, like it happens when we're running fast. If you read the wrong number, so you go, I, you point there, you meant 10, I read nine, you just show me down, okay? So please don't go, no, I meant 10, show me down or up, perfect. That's 15, uh, 20 seconds before the end of the test, I'm gonna give you a clear countdown for when it goes up. Every time it goes up, just very important, find your rhythm again, keep going, okay? Uh, but it does, one kilometer an hour is fast enough to be fast, but it's not fast enough to go uh, with your feet from under you. Okay, then, very important, very, very important for everyone involved in this room, stopping the test. Okay, there's no like time frame to when we stop the test. It's up to you when we stop the test. So when you're running, okay, you're gonna go now and then you're gonna show me like, okay, like 18, 19, and I'm like, great, we've got one more level in the tank. We got up in the speed and you feel like your, your legs can't because you feel, this test just like all of a sudden smacks you with like speed, then you just show me, no, I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna try and push you to the end of that stage. Because it's only a minute, I'm gonna be like, let's go to the very end of the stage, okay? Then at the end of the stage, we stop the treadmill like normal. If you think, if you show me, I can't, and I say, yes, let's go to the end of the stage, come on, let's go, and you, and you really feel like you're, you're gonna end up in my office, you show me a second time, stop it, I'm gonna stop the test for you at the stop button, okay? You're also allowed to press it if you really feel like, oh crap, I'm not allowed to. Please don't hit this one though. If you hit this one, we're gonna pick you up in the parking lot because that's a handbrake for the treadmill. Yeah, like it literally stops. So you're just gonna go flying through here. This little stop over here. Okay, cool. So that's that. And then the other one where I will make this is stop, then I'm gonna go like, yes, we go to the end of the stage and if you really can't, you show me a second time, stop. We stop the test and that's done, okay? Once the test is done, we're gonna stay on the treadmill, take it down to four kilometers an hour and we're just gonna walk it out for three minutes. Otherwise, you're gonna get to the step here and go, Hoop, and we don't want that either, okay? Happy days. So keep quiet from the get-go until we're done with the final three minutes. Everything else is pretty chill. Okay, any last questions? You're good. Okay, speak now for all your silence, eh? Okay, now seated, test starts in three, two, one. So what information are we getting from a VO2 test? VO2 is your body's ability to utilize oxygen. This is a really good predictor for performance. The higher your VO2, 
the more oxygen your body is able to utilize. And as a result, your ability to perform better improves. VO2 testing can be used to determine training thresholds and as a result can be used to determine training intensities. Okay, well, one incline, eight kilometers an hour, 10 seconds to go here. Yeah. Okay, in three, two, one, let's go. Perfect, nice and easy, just get a little bit of rhythm. There we go, very good. Cool, three minutes, yeah. Okay, we said the next one is gonna be 10 kilometers an hour. Okay, you can give me an RPE there. Seven, perfect. So two of the main obstacles that come with doing VOT max testing is that one, they are very, very expensive. So depending on where you are, you're gonna be spending anywhere from a few hundred rand to a few thousand rand to get the test done. And secondly, we've got to think about the accessibility of these testing for most people. In order to get a test done, you need to go to a specialized testing center, either at a university or at a sports institute. And for a lot of people, this can be a hindrance in trying to get the testing done. Okay, going up in four, three, two, one. Let's go, 10 kilometers an hour. This is a bit of an increase now. Find your rhythm nice and early. Very good, very good. Nine. Going up in four, three, two, one. Let's go. 11 kilometers an hour. So, in two to mention that this sort of testing is expensive and can be inaccessible. But how else can we get the same information? Keep in mind that something like a lab based VO2 test is highly variable. So it is really important that we can control the environment that you're doing this in. It is important that the calibration is done very meticulously. That between tests, there's proper calibration done because those readings, same person doing the same test in the same environment is often still going to give two different results. So the variability in doing a lab-based VO2 test is really high. So how else can we get this information? Keeping in mind that doing a VO2 max test in particular can be really fatiguing and taxing on the body. And it is usually something we are not gonna recommend to complete novices and beginners getting started in running because there is a high risk of injury involved in this as well. The real data that we are looking for from a test like a VO2 max test is actually the submaximal data. Since submaximal data is actually the more important information that we're looking for, it is much easier to attain this information through things like field tests or time trials that are a lot less risky than a maximum all-out effort test. It is important to remember that physiology is not black and white. It's very fluid and nothing ever works at a specific point. So really important here is when we are determining your threshold, it's important to know that with that variability that I mentioned, you are often gonna get slight variances. So for example, if you get a test and you get a threshold of four minutes per kilometer, that four minutes per kilometer is in this moment. However, your actual threshold could probably be ranging between 355 per kilometer or 405 per kilometer, as opposed to, like I said, that one specific point in isolation. That is why we then determine training zones as opposed to a particular training pace or a particular training heart rate. Okay, going up in four, three, two, one. Let's go, come on. Plenty left in the tank here, plenty left in the tank here, come on. Here we go now, now we're talking, now we're talking. That's it, very good stuff, very, very good stuff. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Looking very good, looking very, very good here. That's it, that's it. Keep it, find your rhythm, find your rhythm, find your rhythm. There we go. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Yeah, we can do this all day long. We can do this all day long. Very good. Excellent stuff. No, for E. 20. Down, 20. So, end the test onto this. Keep going, keep going. Okay. So, the next one is 18. Okay. Keep it up, keep it up. Okay, going in. Four, three, two, one. Let's go. 18 kilometers an hour. Here we go now. Here we go. Find your rhythm, find your rhythm. Let's push to the end of the stage here. Yeah? Come on, you gotta give me to the end of the stage here. Yeah? Very good, now. Okay, going off. There we go. 
Just grab onto the side, grab onto the side. <coughs> Very good stuff. Okay, cool. Just wait for it to switch off. Okay, we said four kilometers an hour. Nice and easy, three minutes. Just walk it out, nice and easy. As Devlin mentioned, you get a lot of sub-maximal data from this test, and that data is really, really useful. And so if you have a coach that is prescribing your training using that data, then yes, a test like this does become very relevant and useful. There's also instances perhaps where you have elite or sub-elite athletes and you're looking for a, a bit more specific physiological data, and then it definitely is a lot more relevant to do a test like this. And so after all of this, is a test like this, a VO2 max test, a waste of money? Knowing this VO2 max or VO2 peak number on its own is not a valuable insight. There's nothing you can do with that on its own. So the number that you get on your watch, that on its own, not necessarily a valuable piece of information. A test like this, where you have that number in line with the sub-maximal physiological metrics is a very valuable uh, insight and, and test to do. You are then able to take all of those metrics and put that into your training prescription and that becomes very valuable to you as an athlete. And so is it really worth the spend? If you have the resources to do a test like this multiple times a year, then yes, it is worth the spend because you're getting very valuable data. But because we want to be adjusting your training zones perhaps every six to eight weeks, you would then need to be doing this test at least every six to eight weeks, if not even you know, up to 12 weeks. And so it does become quite an expensive venture to be doing that over and over again throughout a year. If you have that resource and that's something you'd like to do, please by all means go ahead because it is good data, but there are other ways where you can get very similar data at a much cheaper sort of way and something like a time trial uh, or a threshold test gives us very similar sort of data. Okay, and we are done in three, two, one, Cool, you can hop off, we're gonna have a seat again. Let me give you some air. And grab my hand so you don't fall here. Nice and easy, cool. Let's have a seat and breathe. Just hold on to this one for me, please. Thank you, get this thing off your face. Good stuff. It's not an easy test, I know. Oh, I, really I still. Want I, I wanted that last. Yeah. Eighteen k's an hour, but oh, I just couldn't. Yeah, no, I get you. I get you. <clears throat> so after exploring the science behind VO2 max testing and evaluating their benefits, it is clear that this assessment holds significant value and it's not just another money draining fad. That being said, the sub-maximal data we get is important, but when it comes to using the data for your training, there are more cost-effective ways of attaining the same information and implementing it into your training. We've already touched on the fact that time trials are a valuable way to get this information. Click the link on screen now to learn how to run the perfect time trial.